Noi siamo qui. We are here. But where are we? This doesn't look like India. Well, surely it was not. Language barriers had confused the men about the name of this place. Indiana. The Italian prisoners of war had come from Tunisia in North Africa, traveling to the United States by boat. By train to Indianapolis and then by truck to this recently built cantonment for World War II prisoners of war. Camp Atterbury in South Central Indiana is where they were, just 30 miles south of Indianapolis and four miles west of Edinburgh, Indiana. The prisoners stepped into the military base named Camp Atterbury, planned and constructed as a result of the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The original size of the camp was planned at just over 40,000 acres, and the POW camp was built on 75 acres near the center and north end of the military base. Camp Atterbury was activated on June 22, 1942, and the POW camp was authorized on September 23rd of the same year. In 1943, after the United States joined their allies in North Africa, the Italian Front collapsed, culminating in the destruction of the Italian 10th Army. In Tunisia, 125,000 Italian soldiers were captured by the Americans. The Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini failed in his attempt to create a modern Roman Empire. When, on April 30, 1943, 767 Italian soldiers captured in North Africa arrived at Camp Atterbury, they received clean clothes, new shoes and socks, their own beds, hot meals and showers, and were able to eat at tables. Most of the captured had little formal education, and some were illiterate, but many of the mostly 20-somethings knew and had practiced a trade. the Italian prisoners of war? No, I didn't. But they worked for your brother? Yes. And do you remember any of interesting, any interesting stories that might have come across the, the table uh, in talking to your brother about the Italian prisoners of war? I know that you mentioned that the, the POWs were really impressed at how well the ground grew vegetables. Yes, yes, they did. They enjoyed the work. They were happy and they'd sing. Well, oh really? Well, they were working. Out. They were pleased to be here. They were very nice. And my brother would go down in a, or have somebody go down in a truck and bring them up here every day. What relation did he have with the 
to the prisoners of war? He paid them. He paid them because they work here? Yes. And this was his farm? Yes. Okay. And how did he get involved with using the POWs? Do you remember? Well, he needed help on here because when you plant a lot of things on this acreage, you need a lot of help. Okay. And so he found out that he could go down there and get them. They would help him out. And that was in? 43. But the, your, relate, the, your brother's relationship with the Italians was very good. Oh, yes. They uh, wrote letters back and forth even when they were sent to a different camp. Okay. In Ohio and so on. Yeah, they kept track. And uh, they enjoyed it. And that's why they made these things, because they were so pleased. Let's see what they made here. When the Italian prisoners of war were here, your brother had good, good rapport with them? Absolutely. Absolutely. He and his wife. You'll see by some of the things in this. Pauline, how many acres was the farm at that time? 83 acres. Okay, and uh, those were all arable and the Italian prisoners of war helped your brother with those? Absolutely not. Uh, I think about 60 acres was what was in vegetables and so on. Okay. Because see, there's farms and barns and stuff. And did they help plant and harvest? Oh, yes. Oh, both. Well, now, I don't know if they stayed long enough to harvest or not. I really don't know that. Do you know how long they were able to help? Oh, the, the whole planting season, I'm sure. In 1943, mm -hmm. but not 44. I don't know, because it's just 43 on that book. Okay. We're very excited that you chose the Italian Prisoner of War Chapel as the subject matter of your spring interactive exhibit. What made you decide that the chapel was 
important enough to dedicate an entire interactive exhibit to it. Well, we were having um, a morning member opening for another exhibit about three years ago. And after it was over, one of our members, Roy Zener, came up and said, what do you know about Camp Atterbury? And I said, well, honestly, I, I don't know a lot about Camp Atterbury other than our exhibit designer at the time would go down there for training. And he said, well, let me take you down there sometime. So we made a date and, and spent the day at Camp Atterbury. And he introduced me to many people. And part of what we did was tour the museum. And in the museum, there's a, a very nice display about the chapel. And I said, what's this chapel? And he said, well, the chapel's still here if you want to see it. And I said, well, I absolutely want to see it. I was just from the stories in the Camp Atterbury Museum itself. I knew there was something interesting about this, but then seeing the chapel was almost breathtaking because it, you know, you just kind of can imagine, even though it's unimaginable, what life was like at Camp Atterbury for these prisoners of war. So in that, I knew there was a story there. Um, I had no idea Indiana had prisoners of war during World War II. And the vast majority of people that I tell about this exhibit had no idea. So what I love about this is it's going to bring a story that's mostly unknown to a whole new audience. I'm glad you're doing it. As a member of the board of directors of the Italian Heritage Society, we're particularly interested in things Italian, mm -hmm. and especially as they relate to Indiana in our case. Can you tell me in the panoply of things historical, now that this year especially, Indiana is celebrating, of course, it's bicentennial, how do you frame the significance if there is a kind of a parameter in your mind or a yardstick or some way of judging how the, the chapel itself is of historical significance? The chapel for me is of historical significance because right now we're living through a time of you're not like me so I don't know how I should feel about you. You're not like me so maybe you don't even belong here. And I believe for the Italian prisoners of war they were feeling some of those very same feelings. We're in a, a very heavy political climate right now where some people are looking for the other. Who's not like me and who can I blame for this? And I feel like, you know, certainly during World War II we were dealing with that and then you have this group of Italian prisoners of war who, who had never been here before, probably had not thought about what it would like to, to be here in the United States and here they are plopped in the middle of Indiana. And how did they deal with that? How did the community deal with that? What was, you know, Camp Atterbury's response to that? And so this exhibit, you know, that takes place in 1943 has 2016 written all over it. That's very interesting. I had not thought of the cultural interaction relating to the present day. And in your findings, <laughs> Is there a conclusion as to how these foreigners, mm -hmm. people like that come from my background, for instance, how, how they meshed or didn't mesh with the local population? Not only the prison, but any other of the, of the surrounding areas, if they were exposed to them. The nice thing is, I've come to this uh, exhibit and experience with no frame of reference. So everything is new to me. Everything is fresh to me. But what is surprising is how integrated the Italians and the Americans were as a result of um, working on family farms. You know, this was a time when a lot of the American boys were gone, and, but the work didn't stop and you still had to feed families and you still had to grow crops here. And so a lot of the Italian prisoners of war were used to work on these farms and used really isn't even the right word. I think that um, the relationships developed between the farm families and the prisoners of war 
was nothing short of miraculous. When you talk to these families today and they're still telling these stories, they're showing you photographs of the uh, prisoners of war as they worked on the farm and you know you go back and read the newspaper articles and things like that. That to me is uh, really exciting and a way to share this story and I know we're going to find families throughout this experience who maybe had prisoners of war working on the farm but hadn't even thought about it for years or grandchildren now who never even heard those stories. We find that here often. Our Lady's Chapel in the Meadow stands silent witness to the hearts, minds, and faith of the POWs, far from home and alone in enemy territory. Soon after their arrival, the papal nuncio, Cardinal Amleto Cicognani, visited and said mass on the site of the chapel. Perhaps this visit provided the original impetus for this memorial. Concerns for families at home seeking the consolation of their souls and a place to pray and worship. From among the many artisans and craftsmen, many uneducated and some illiterate, the chapel came to be built. Inspired by Father Maurice Imhoff, their chaplain, the prisoners begged to cast off materials, cement blocks, wood and mortar from the camp and constructed the 11 by 16 foot chapel. The interior decorations fashioned after photographs provided by Father Imhoff were painted from dyes from plants and even the prisoners own blood. Saved from dismantling by the wife of the commander in charge of the teardown and resale of the camp, the chapel has stood the test of time, neglect, and even wanton attack. After its restoration in 1989, someone tried to destroy the chapel, chopping a hole in the restored roof and setting flammable liquids afire inside it in an attempt to destroy it. Here stands an enduring testament to the faith of our Italian kinsmen. This sacred place served to create a space of serenity and contemplation and an anchor for souls in a strange land far from home. Here they could recollect themselves, pray for their loved ones back home, and thank God for their deliverance from the immediate horror of war. It remains for all present to understand, appreciate, and respect the meaning of this monument.